let's begin. Uh, let 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 me introduce my basic definition to you. Uh, so let's start with uh, a test coding. Now this is a test coding, uh, maybe not proper. Uh, we if we are given a uh, text coding, uh, we call it, it is a trick coding. If every color class is used as for it, uh, and uh, if this coding is repeatable, uh, we say that any two color class, the size of any two color class differ by at most of one. Uh, let, 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 that means equitable. Uh, in other words, uh, if a coloring is equitable, we can see that each color uh, takes uh, at the most least numbers of vertices and at least least numbers of vertices. So this is the definition of equitable. Uh, now we combine these two definitions together and define equitable trick coloring. So this is our basic definition. Uh, for this definition, we we can show a simple example. Uh, let let's look at let's look at the K99. Uh, this is the bipartite graph. Uh, of course, of course, this graph this graph has a equitable one carry and there's no problem. It's a trivial. Uh, no, no, it's there's no there's no such a carry. And uh, in case two, uh, we can see that this this graph two carry so that each color takes nine vertices. Uh, uh, this nice slide. So this is a uh, equitable uh, coloring. But the problem comes from the uh, case K is three. When K is three, this graph ha uh, has no uh, cannot have a equitable tree three coloring because this graph has eighteen vertices. If we have equitable three tree three color uh, equitable tree three coloring, then each color class takes six vertices. We know each color class induces a forest. So uh, no six words may be like this or like this. That means an independent, independent set or a star. Or a star. Uh, so in this case, uh, you, you can see that uh, if we take six like this, uh, then this we can take only one and uh, another size we take five. Then we left two here and four here. Now it's a cycle here. Uh, so we can, we can see that uh, this graph has no equitable tree for coloring, but uh, for k is at least four, uh, we can see yes. Uh, so this is a, this is a example. Uh, this example shows that uh, if one graph has an equitable tree k coloring, we cannot see this graph has an equitable tree k plus one coloring. This is different. This is, this is different from uh, some factor uh, in the proper coloring. Uh, so we have two definitions of uh, the chromatic number. The first one, uh, I call it equitable vertex diversity. That is the minimum integer k, so that this graph has an equitable tricky coloring. And uh, another one is a stronger one. That means uh, this, this, this integer uh, k uh, satisfies, satisfies the um, property that uh, for any integer uh, at least k, uh, this graph has an uh, equitable tree as curry. Uh, so this, this two number, this two chromatic number are different uh, by our uh, last example. Uh, for this curry, uh, uh, actually, uh, this curry, the first paper uh, about this kind of curry uh, is uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, this theorem says that if a G is a graph with maximum degree at most R, then there is an equitable partition in a vertex set into K subsets. So that each, uh, so that each subset induces a vertex, uh, induces a graph uh, with maximum degree at most one. Of course, uh, this is a forest. Uh, and uh, uh, during this proof, we can give a polynomial polynomial time algorithm uh, to construct this uh, coloring. Uh, so this is so this is seem, seems to be the first result on this coloring. And uh, uh, this theorem this theorem uh, implies that uh, uh, equitable vertex uh, upload solution is at most uh, is, is at most in a maximum degree. Oh, sorry, this K case are, uh, I type in case are, this is a typo. Yeah, case are. 
uh, and uh, recently, uh, Mona told me that the Kimi could list, uh, QT reduce this atom bound from delta to uh, five or six delta, but I didn't think this proof. Maybe Kit didn't finish it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he just told me. <laughs> he will come here, I think, in July. <laughs> so I don't know how to prove this result. Uh, so for this coring, we have a conjecture. Uh, this conjecture says that any graph with maximum degree at most R has an equitable tricky has, has an uh, has an equitable tricky coring for any k uh, is at least uh, about half of R um, plus one. That is. This is a conjecture. Uh, uh, of course, if this conjecture is right, this upon bound, when this upon bound uh, can be at 10, I complete. So this is a conjecture, and uh, now it's, now this conjecture is uh, widely open. Uh, we just showed some special case. For example, for example, integral graph uh, and uh, something, some graph. I forgot. So this is a, uh, so now uh, today uh, I will talk about this conjecture and uh, give some uh, partial proof for this. Uh, first, uh, we show uh, show out show one of our first result on this. Uh, this this result says that if G is a class and uh, K is at least a list number, then we can partition our text size equitably into K subset. So let each sub so let each subset induce a forest of maximum degree at the most two. Uh, so this kind of forest uh, we say we call it a linear forest. So uh, so uh, by this result we can see that uh, that conjecture uh, is right for graphs with large maximum degree. So I I uh, to the proof of this result is uh, is not is not difficult. Uh, I think it's it's easy. Uh, now I can show it to you how okay, how we consider this uh, how we consider this problem. So we uh, partition a group into two steps. Uh, each one uh, is is simple, I think. Uh, so the step one, uh, we assume that the maximum degree is, is at least half of the order, and uh, in this case, we imply that k is at least uh, this number. Uh, so now we divide the main group into some um, into three cases. And uh, the first one is k is at least half k is at least half of my order. Maybe in this case we know this number. We know we know this number is at the most two. This implies that if we have a equitable tricky coloring, then each color set uh, takes at the most two vertices. So in this case you know in any graph any two any two vertices uh, induce their forest. So this is easy. Okay. <laughs> so we can partition this graph as you like. So this is a easy case. So my second case is that case between uh, third, uh, third of an order and an half an order. In this case, we know this upper bound is bound by three and uh, the lower bound is uh, bound by two. That means if we have such a coloring, each color takes two or three vertices. In this case, how can we do it deal with it? Uh, our idea is to our our idea is to con to consider the complement of this graph G. Uh, that means we have a graph G. This graph G has maximum degree at maximum degree at least uh, uh, n minus one over two. Then we consider the complement of this graph. We have a uh, bounded uh, minimum degree. Uh, so in this case, we know n is at least twice of the delta, twice of the mi mi minimum degree. So we can use it to prove that uh, this graph G C has a matching of size at least at delta. This is a uh, easy access in any graph theory. Uh, so in this case, we we choose n minus two k. Uh, we choose a matching uh, of n minus two k like this. This. And in this case, uh, we choose the matching, and for each for each age of this matching, we assign a new vertex. And we assign a new vertex 
Of course, we now we don't mind this vertex whether this not as threatened to them. So we have three cases. This vertex is not as threatened for and it's not as threatened to any of them, and it's as threatened to two of them, and it is as threatened to three uh, both of them. And uh, recall that this is just the complement of the graph G. So when we come back, uh, each each vertex set come back, we we click see we have three three graphs like this. So this three graph, uh, each of these two graphs is a linear forest. So in this case, we click do like this. So now we the little part. We found n minus two k uh, vertex set of size three. So this part is easy. So ah, let let let's go. So the third case is uh, the last case. That means uh, k is at least the least number and at the most uh, left. Uh, so in this case, we can say that we can say that uh, similar up similar bound is bounded uh, by four and by three. Means if we have such a coloring, each color, each color set, each color set takes three vertices or four vertices. And uh, in this case, uh, we can see that G, the number of vertices in G is at the, is at the most of 40 minus one. We here we have a minus one. Uh, here we didn't show a detail proof. Here we some 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 some, some more argument here. Like we just uh, know this fact. And then how to continue? Uh, similar, similar idea. In this case, we should, we should, we should found, found, we should found a, a linear forest of size three or size four in G. So now let's come to the complement of G. Uh, so in this case, uh, okay, uh, we have uh, found the minimum degree in this case, we imply that uh, this graph GC and the complement has two disjoint paths. Disjoint paths. Uh, the first one, the path uh, uh, takes delta plus one vertex, and the second path uh, takes delta uh, vertex. We have two such a disjoint paths. Uh, so in this case, we could do such, we could do some work like we could do some position like this. So for each four consecutive vertices, we make we make a list as we make this as a set, and uh, this four, and then the second four vertices, and like this. Let's go on. And uh, for the second pass, we can choose the first four vertices as a vertex vertex set, and then they go on. Uh, so uh, do, so in in the first pass, we choose uh, we choose uh, about half of the data. Uh, such a vertex set, and then in the second pass, we choose also this. Um, this process is beta. Uh, so this beta is n minus two k like this. Uh, why we do this? Because this pass, the complement of uh, pass on for vertex is also a linear forest. It's also a pass. So we can come back to a linear forest. Uh, so we finish this part, this bit part. And this new argument is easier, like, like, like an idea in case two. We just found the matching and uh, I said, uh, the text. And uh, this is an idea for my, uh, for the proof of step one. So the step two is easier because. We should. This. We'll keep proof it. <laughs> yeah, we need we need to prove this, and uh, we also need to prove this. We can do such a choice. So this is this is the basic idea. And then step two, the second part is easier because this part k is at least the uh, uh, g over four. In this case, in this case, we find that the complete the minimum degree of the complement uh, of g. A is at least a half of an order, so the graph has a homogeneity circle. So we can choose, we can, we can extend the partition in this in this circle three, four like this. So it's easier. So I don't need.
So this is the proof of this result. Uh, uh, and until now, we don't know how to improve. We don't know how to improve. Uh, we don't know how to improve the atom bound uh, for for this. Uh, so this is uh, my second topic in this my second topic in this talk is about planar graph. So uh, in 2015, uh, Esperit and some others proved this result. And they said that every planar graph has a repeatable tricky covering for every uh, k. Uh, this k is at least four. Uh, and uh, this proof and uh, this proof is uh, easier uh, because uh, we can start with uh, we can start with we can start it with uh, with we can start with uh, an acyclic five coloring of planar graph. Uh, this acyclic five coloring that means acyclic coloring means every two color class in the forest. So we can partition a planar graph into five sets, each by five set and any two the unit of any two in this forest. So we can choose carefully so that like this, uh, we can choose carefully like this so that we can induce a four equitable part. Uh, that is the basic idea of near proof. So this is uh, so this is uh, this result and the list and the list result and the proof of the proof idea of this result is like this. That means uh, this equitable vertex subsidy is at the most acyclic chromatic number minus one. So this is uh, uh, a factor like this. And now uh, I want to do something about uh, beyond plane graph. That means, uh, uh, that means the definition is uh, like plane graph, but, uh, but uh, this graph may be not planar. Uh, so now, what is IC planar? This IC, IC means plane graph with independent uh, independent crossings. So we know if we draw a graph of, uh, on a plane, uh, if, we, if, if this graph is planar, there's no crossing. But uh, this graph, uh, if this graph is not is not planar, there there must be some crossing in this drawing. Uh, in this drawing, if we have two crossings, say one, say two, uh, we know each crossing is uh, is uh, uh, is come, come from one edge crossing uh, the other edge. So each crossing corresponds to four vertex of the graph. Uh, so we see C1 and C2 uh, are independent if these four red vertices are different from those four uh, green vertices. And uh, if they are not independent, if there are some intersection uh, like this. So this is, uh, so, so this is, uh, uh, so, so this is the definition of an independent crossing. So this is a graph, uh, this is an example of IC planar graph. This graph uh, uh, says that there is a six regular IC planar graph. Each vertex has between six and any two crossings are independent. So this is a IC planar graph. And we can also see that uh, every IC planar graph has a vertex of maximum of a, uh, has a vertex of a degree at most a six. That, is, that means this graph is six degenerate. Uh, uh, now, uh, what can we see? Uh, uh, so now I want to see some results uh, on the equitable tree coloring of these IC planar graphs. So this is a this is a short story of our paper. We have finished this paper three years ago and published uh, this year. Uh, you can see some story here. We sub we submitted this paper here, and uh, some <laughs> some days later, somebody some some Submit the table says that uh, IC planar graphs has a bounded acyclic platinum So we know 10 minus 1 is the atom bound for this number. We just okay, thought about it. So that means uh, the, the equitable vertex diversity of IC planar graph is at most 9 by now result. Uh, but luckily, we proved 8. <laughs> Otherwise, this paper will be, <laughs> will be removed. Oh, I don't know why this when the reviewing of this table takes two years. So we just one long reviewing. There is no reviewing notes, just directly accepted. I don't know what is happening. 
no, I didn't put it on that table. I forgot to put it there. Uh, but uh, this table just just uh, want to prove this this number. He, he didn't say this fact. Uh, so so luckily we 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 proved eight. Otherwise uh, our paper would be covered by now. It's out. Uh, no, no, there's no relationship. And uh, and uh, now I should uh, proof idea of this result. This result our eight. Uh, this this result didn't use anything about a cyclic a cyclic color We just uh, use uh, some. Let me see. Uh, the basic idea comes from the uh, first lemma. The first lemma is very nice. Uh, uh, that means if we have a shape graph uh, of all the the number of vertices is divisible by m. Uh, if we have this result, we can have every I say in a graph to have an equitable m power. So using this lemma, we just uh, to consider I say planar graphs with the number of vertices that is uh, divisible by m. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, I think this is a useful lemma. So let us show how to uh, let me show how to prove this lemma. Uh, actually, this lemma is proved by induction. So we first uh, assume that uh, the number of vertices here is between this and this. And uh, eh? uh, we know IC planar graph is a six dictionary. So we can choose a vertex of minimal degree. That means this 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 vertex we has a degree at most six. And then we move this vertex from G. We come we come to a graph G minus V. This graph has a equitable tree M covering. Uh, so we have a equitable tree M covering. Uh, now, now let's look at this vertex V because this vertex V has minimum degree has minimum degree. That means the degree of this vertex is at most six. So among nodes M uh, among nodes M cast at uh, most three at most three uh, contains. Contains at least two numbers of them, right? Uh, at most the three contains at least two numbers of them. That means at least m minus three, uh, at least uh, m minus three color class uh, contains at uh, most of one label of v. So in this case, if some class uh, has only t vertices inside, we can move this v inside. Because this this vertex V has only one label, at most one label here. We just put it here, and it just uh, uh, act as a leaf. Uh, so uh, in the bad case is each such kind of, each each color class like this uh, has T plus one vertex. Uh, so we, so in this case, uh, so in this case we can see that we can see that uh, this V1, V2, uh, V3 uh, just has T vertices because uh, we can show that n is not this number uh, because if n because if n is this number we can uh, construct a graph that means a graph tree and uh, add an isolate, isolated vertex and like this. Uh, yeah, if n is not clear, we G minus two is at most n times t plus one and minus three and this must be t three t. Uh, so in this case we come to this. Uh, now you know we cannot move inside any of such a color class directory, but if in such a if in such a vertex set, now is a vertex u that has at most one neighbor. In some but some color class uh, in V1, V2, or we can move this V into this set and move this U outside and move this U into this set. Let's make people orange, right? Uh, because when you when you come here, uh, this color class uh, uh, has a P plus one vertex and uh, also, it, this is a forest because you is just a leaf. 
and we can, be, we can move this V inside and move U out, and we don't change the size of this color colors. So in this case, we can construct the equitable tree coloring. So the bad case is that uh, for any uh, U um, in those color class and for any color class uh, among V1, V2, V3, we have this, this fact. We have this fact, that means, that means this set and this set between them, there are many, many A's because uh, each, ve each vertex, each vertex in this, uh, in this set has at least two neighbors, uh, uh, actually has six neighbors in this, at least six. So we can see that there are many A's between them, but we know IC planar graph is at uh, is uh, six uh, degenerate and uh, this is a bipartite, so we could get a uh, upper bound of this uh, this kind of graph because because this graph is bipartite. So our contradiction comes from this. Uh, so many edges, not many edges. So yeah, happy. Yeah. Bipartite. Uh, we just uh, we just uh, need to use then. Uh, a compound of the number of ages in this graph. Yeah. But part of the accuracy is 2 uh, uh, 9 over 4 n minus 6. Uh, that means uh, 2, 2, 2 n minus 4 plus half uh, plus uh, n over 4. Let's, because, because crossing. Because now it's at most uh, n minus two crossing, we just remove them and without without being plain graph like this. So this is the basic lemma. So we so now we we have this lemma. We can do more. Uh, that means uh, we can assume that the number of order and the number of vertices uh, of J uh, is divisible by m. That means we can assume n is empty. Uh, now we can do some similar uh, arguments like this. Uh, now, now we hit, uh, we do induction on the number of ages. Uh, uh, now we remove one age. Uh, we choose the minimum degree, and uh, we choose the minimum degree with x, 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 and then remove x, x1. x1 is the number of x. Uh, so in this case, g minus g, g minus x1 has the table into V1, V2, and Vm, like this. And, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, we, should, we should remember that uh, in this partition, we didn't have, we didn't have such an age x, x1, because we just removed it. Uh, if we add this, this, add this age back, we can say that, you, we can say that uh, now it's another neighbor of x, just uh, in this vertex set, V1. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, when this red red edge is added back, there's no cycle. There's no cycle in this. Uh, that means, that means, uh, now are at least the two neighbors are in the first color class. If uh, if, if like this. Uh. Case. In this case, we we can see what. In this case, we can say. Uh, among V2, uh, to Vm, there are at most two. There are at most two color class containing at most, uh, uh, containing at least two neighbors of X and the NAS. We can assume that from V4 to Vm, each of them contains at most of a neighbor of X. And in this case, we assume that, uh, X cannot move, cannot be moved into V4, V5, uh, or Vm, otherwise we are happy. Uh, so in this case, we can see these two facts. And the first, the first fact is that, uh, for any, uh, for any vertex inside, inside the node, it has at least, it has, a, it has, a, it has a, at least two neighbors in V1 strand. Uh, this v1 prime is this v1 and uh, uh, minus this x and this x because in this case because otherwise because otherwise because otherwise if some vertex here has at most one neighbor here 
we can move such a vertex inside uh, inside this this vertex set and uh, move this x to this v4 and we just uh, change uh, and uh, we result in an equitable condition. Uh, so the second part is uh, is uh, similar result, but uh, we need more proofs here. Uh, we just uh, list this result here. So in this case, we have a result that for any vertex uh, uh, in uh, V two, V three, or V M, it has at least two neighbors uh, in a V one prime. So we let this we we let the union of V two, uh, V three, and uh, V M is A, and each vertex in A has at least two neighbors to V one prime. So we partition this A into two parts. The first part A1 uh, means each vertex in A1 has uh, has it has exactly exactly two neighbors here, and uh, the other part has at least three neighbors. Here. And we 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 assume that there are are numbers of there are vertices in that A, and uh, we can uh, use we can use some density attribute to show that r is at least uh, this number, r is lower bounded. Uh, and and uh, r, is, uh, r is lower bounded uh, is a uh, very useful fact because we can, we can have, we can have uh, the next lemma. Uh, this lemma, uh, this lemma, what is, this lemma is a useful lemma for our induction argument because we can see that. Uh, so this is uh, A1, we, we know, each with each vertex in A1 has at least uh, has except has has uh, two neighbors in V1 prime. So if so, this lemma says that uh, in A1 we can found two non-adjacent vertices y one y two uh, so that so that uh, y one and y two has a common neighbor in V1 prime like this. So this 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 structure is very useful because we can see that this v one prime has this v one prime v one prime has only t minus one vertex. Now if we move we move y one y two inside this set and move this vertex v out, and we can find that. So we just remove the one vertex and add two new vertices. So we can result the we can we can get a we can get a set uh, of size t. And uh, in this case, we can see that when v one v two is moved in, r moved in, and uh, v is moved out, then result the the this part also induces a forest because v one has only two neighbors here, and the v two has only two neighbors here. And we move the least common neighbors, and so we so we can have this fact. So this fact is, is very useful because uh, we do this operation, and we can result we can result in a not of G prime. This G prime uh, is uh, uh, it. We move X and V inside, and move out V one and V two. So this graph has uh, has uh, m minus two m minus one times t vertex and so uh, you can see that we can use some induction because if we can see if, if we can prove that g prime has an equitable three m minus one covering we can see that g has an equitable three m covering because we have this is the last this is the last one color set so we can prove this at least so how to prove this g prime so we can use our induction because you can see so this so this 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 lemma is uh, a the critical lemma of our proof and uh, using using this lemma we can uh, prove that g prime has a possible g m covering. Actually we can actually we are we also do a similar similar argument and found another graph uh, just to prove, prove this graph has a possible g m minus two covering. Like so this is the induction work. So this is the basic idea of our proof here. And uh, using 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 a proof idea, actually we we use a uniform proof. We can prove node node five results. 
we have some good condition here, uh, but uh, our proof is a, is a uniform one. So this is uh, the proof of this, this theorem. Uh, now, uh, let's review some results like this. We know IC planar graph, uh, this number is at most eight, and planar graph, this number is at most four. And now we construct a four planar graph is at most three. So there's no, no result is open. Uh, we know IC planar graph is six degenerate, and the planar graph is five degenerate. For five degenerate, for five degenerate graph, uh, as per it, and some others prove that this number is at most uh, 81, 81. And uh, let me prove that this number is at most is at most uh, this number. Uh, this this number is my upper bound in that conjecture. Uh, so this is a five degenerate. So this is the result uh, for five uh, for five um, degenerate graph. And now our, our work is to do some work, is to give some results on uh, the degenerate graph. We can see that if this D is not too large, it's not too large. We this upper bound also holds. Uh, so this is our result. Uh, of course, uh, now result like this, uh, it looks like that maybe. So this is uh, our third result. Uh, actually, uh, this is our third result. We see that if we are given a D degenerate graph with maximum degree at, ma at most at start, then if this graph has an incredible tricky covering for any K at least this number, and now we have a condition. This maximum degree, uh, oh no, no, this data, this data is a constant, not maximum degree. This data is at least n times d. So, so this result uh, improves the, uh, the results of. Uh, yeah, they said they said that if data is at least this number, uh, this result holds. But we we have linear linear lower bound. So. Uh, of course, the proof of this result is, is much more difficult than the first two results. Uh, uh, now we have better news. Uh, we cannot see this. Uh, that means uh, if we know uh, a graph, uh, if this graph, the number of the order of this graph uh, is uh, divisible by m, if we uh, if we if we know such a graph is equitable to m coloring, which is not we cannot see. Every graph k, k, we do so. Uh, but if we do, but if we consider, but if we consider proper coloring, we can see, we can see this. Do you know why? If if we if we, if we see if we see proper coloring, we can we can see like this. G, uh, if 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 this G is M T minus R, we can use like this. If 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 we are considering proper coloring, we can see that we have a proper we have a proper coloring here, then we have a proper coloring here, and uh, this K R part uh, means every color, every vertex, every vertex, any two vertex in in this part takes different colors. So we just removed we just removed one. But uh, for in proper coloring, we cannot see this. So this is the bad news. Uh, maybe this is a bad news for me. Maybe you can prove it. So, uh, although this is although this is a bad news, uh, we can do more work. Uh, first, we can show that this number, this R, is not too large. Uh, we can first show that this number R is not too large. Uh, the proof idea is similar in that case. We can choose the minimum degree of a text X and remove this X and remove this of a text. X and G minus X has an incredible tricky coloring by induction. And uh, in this coloring, uh, we can see that uh, near R, R plus one color class uh, of size T minus one and uh, other, uh, other color class has size T. So in this case, if T is at most this number, then among nodes R, among nodes R plus one, Color class mail is at least one contains at most one neighbor of x, and then we can move this x text inside this color class, and we are happy. So, uh, so we can so we have proved this this r is not very large. Uh, next, next uh, we can do some we can do some complicated work like this. 
uh, we also do this we also do this but uh, we just uh, uh, we also construct a graph g star like this uh, that means we add a complete graph on our matrix uh, but, but uh, our coloring uh, is not uh, is not a direct uh, actually our coloring we first like color we first like color that are hard uh, because this k has uh, w1 w2 wr we just color them with different uh, colors first. So just do this. We just do this. We just do this thing. And uh, G is D degenerate. So we can uh, arrange the vertices uh, from V1 and V2. That means uh, V1 has the mass, V1 has the mass degree and uh, V1 has the minimum degree like this. And, uh, in, the, and in the middle, now it's a flat. Uh, we just uh, use this flag to partition uh, to set. And uh, in this case, we can see that, we can see that uh, for any vi, we have this result. That means this degree is uh, not very large like this, and we have this bound. And uh, this 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 lambda t should be choose should be choose the very carefully like this. Uh, and uh, we have and uh, we have this uh, and after this uh, we can see. We can see oh, too far. Oh, <laughs> we can see that uh, this star. Uh, this is this star. This star is the coloring uh, of this of this graph. Uh, because this graph, this graph, uh, the graph is boosted by v1 uh, and uh, v2 and uh, v new has incredible tricky coloring by induction and uh, combine this coloring and this coloring together, uh, we, we call the resulting coloring by C star. And we can see that every color class of C star contains at most S plus one. This S plus one is at most K by the choice of this S, uh, of this V star. And then, and then our, our coloring is to, our, our, our method is to color, uh, nodes by taste one by one in this order and uh, in each in each step we we just uh, need three conditions uh, that means each color class in this forest and each color class appears on at most of the and the third and the third one is important that means nodes vertices uh, will not be recolored will not be recolored that means uh, we recolor after after nodes vertices are colored we color nodes vertices one by one we can color this v mu plus one, and the next we color v mu plus two. When we are coloring v mu plus two, we may color this vertex, but we cannot color really color nodes, nodes anyone, not anyone inside this. Uh, and uh, our proof is to to prove that uh, this algorithm uh, well retains yes. That means we can finish, we can come to the last step. We can end end. And with the last step, that means we can uh, color all of them. We can color uh, all of them. What is it? And each color in the forest, and each color appears on appears on at most the t vertices because uh, the number of vertices here is k times t. So each color uh, uh, takes exactly t vertices. And uh, we also know that this w1, w2, wr takes different so uh, if we remove the colors, uh, we can result we can result uh, uh, equitable tree coloring uh, of of the graph G because uh, because uh, uh, in the coloring of in the color in the coloring of G star every every coloring every color every color set has a key vertices and uh, nodes added nodes added vertices from here is like this. It, they are, they are in different colors. So if we remove the now, it becomes to t minus one, t minus one. So the coloring of G, uh, the color, the color class in the coloring of uh, in the G uh, is uh, every color class of G uh, takes uh, at least a t minus one vertex and at the most a t vertex. So this is equitable. So this is an idea. Uh, 
uh, we can see some, some something more about the list part. Uh, and uh, again, uh, asterisks and, uh, and some other roulette. Uh, for any bit that you the graph, this number is at most three, uh, three power like this. And uh, recently, and the recently we proved that uh, we we conjecture that uh, this this number, this upper bound, can be improved to D. And we want to do this, and we show that this this result uh, holds for rough rough with tree with at most D because this is a natural D degenerate graph. And uh, if this conjecture is right, then this upper bound D is sharp. We can see this fact. Uh, so this part is a uh, KD, uh, a complete graph on D by test. Uh, if if this D K B improved, uh, for example, if D K B D K B reduced to D minus one, then we use D minus one curves to color this graph, and each color class induces a forest. Uh, so in this case, we must have two vertices having the same color, and uh, any other vertices cannot use this red color. We, we, uh, for otherwise, we have a triangle. So in this, so in this case, in this part, uh, this KD has only two vertices has has only two vertices colored by this red color. And uh, this is a split graph. Uh, so we add some isolate isolated vertices here and add edge to there. And uh, any None of nodes what is can be colored by red because otherwise this will be a triangle. Uh, this is this will be a triangle. That means this red color appears it appears only two only two times only twice uh, because our coloring is equitable. So every color class appears at most three times and because we have we have already one color class uh, takes only two vertices. So any color class takes at most three vertices. So in this case, if there are many vertices here, we will get a contradiction. So this shows that the sharpness of this D. And the uh, rest uh, uh, and uh, this is our conjecture. Uh, let me uh, com com compare uh, this conjecture to near result. You can see that near result like this, way like this. Uh, so, so we want to prove some linear bound here. That means something here, uh, just access the bound. So uh, we have done some work like this. Uh, uh, that means if we have uh, some d dependent graphs, uh, uh, if, how to say this? <laughs> if, if the maximum degree is not very large, uh, then we can, uh, get a linear bound for the equitable vertex of the CT. But here, uh, I'm not very happy with this result because we need this, we need this condition. That means we just assume that the number of vertices in G is divisible by K. If G is not divisible by K, I don't know how to, how to see. So this is, uh, I'm not unhappy with this condition. Uh, so this is so this is uh, uh, this. and uh, at the end of this talk, uh, I can introduce some relative problem. We know we know independent independent set uh, are zero degenerate the and the forest are one degenerate. Uh, so we can naturally. Uh, consider such kind of problem. That means partition of a set of a uh, degenerate D degenerate graph equitably into some numbers of induced edge degenerate graph like this. So uh, if 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 H if H is one, uh, it corresponds to the equitable tree coloring problem. If H is zero, it corresponds to the equitable So if H is three or something like uh, something relative to D, uh, this number, we don't know. So maybe we can do some more like this. So that's all. Thank you. This is in the end of this talk. That's it.